Welcome back to my course on painting children. While this is by no means an exhaustive talk on proportion, I would like to just introduce you to some of the things that I look for when I'm painting or drawing children. Generally speaking, I look for the gesture, the expression, the individuality of that person. And so most of my paintings are based on careful observation of each child and every single one of them is different and unique in their own way. My daughter, for example, when she was really little, used to put her pinky finger up by her mouth whenever she was really tired. And we always joked that she, she was copying Dr. Evil, but it was actually really cute. And it turned out to be one of those things that really added to her particular likeness. So I captured it in a couple of paintings and I'm so glad that I did. Um, other examples of this might be just the way your child sits while they're working on an activity or playing with a puzzle. Different things that you might notice that really are specific to each individual. So while proportion is very important, um, I don't think you have to take a academic anatomy class to learn what you need to learn. There are plenty of great books out there that you can study to learn the muscles and the bones and how everything connects. But ultimately we're looking for the, the carriage of the person, the gesture, the articulation of everything that makes them them. And that's what we're gonna go for. Of course, we'll walk through some of the things that we tend to notice about um, kids in particular. And if you'll bear with me, we'll use some of my paintings as examples. I've broken this course up in several smaller segments so you can watch it at your convenience. And later on, we'll get into some uh, more in-depth painting demos. But for now, I hope you enjoy some of the basics that I'm about to share with you. And please send me your questions. If you have anything else that you want me to talk about in greater detail, I'll be happy to bring that in a later video. Okay, so before we dive into children's proportions, I thought I would go through a brief rundown of how I teach facial proportions on adults. And I've got an example here. This is a painting I did a few years ago as a demo for my students. Um, and I'm actually gonna go ahead and straighten this out a little bit for the sake of demonstration. I chose this painting because he's almost straight on to us and usually I don't paint portraits quite so straight on, but um, it's a great example that I can use for proportions today. So here we go, straighten that. What I like to show my students when I'm painting an adult is that if you were to draw a line for the top of the head and a line for the bottom of the chin, you would find the center would line up with the eyes. So we can see um, that's pretty close. And then while this particular model does not have a hairline, normally I would start the facial features with a line for the hairline. And then that makes one third to the eyebrow. The eyebrow to the bottom of the nose makes another third and the bottom of the nose to the bottom of the chin make another third. So another way of looking at it, here's one third, one third, and one third. And that's, it doesn't have to be exactly that way, but that's what we look for, um, for some classical facial proportions. As far as the width, um, the eyes are still generally an eyes width apart. So if I draw these lines here, you can see they're all about the same distance. And then an additional line to the side of the face and the other side of the face gives you a width of five eyes across. From there, uh, another thing that I look for is that the bottom of the ears pretty typically line up with the bottom of the nose. And this is, of course, if you're looking at the subject straight on. And this distance the, between the nose and the lip is different on everyone. So generally, I try to get this triangle pretty much set before I figure out the distances at the mouth. So that's pretty generally uh, what I look for with proportions on adults. And the biggest difference that you'll see has to do with the size of the cranium. So let's pull up an image of a child next. Okay, I thought this painting of my daughter from a few years ago would be a good example because again, it, it shows more of a straight on kind of vantage point. 
even though I'm slightly looking down at her and that shows that her chin is going to look a little bit smaller and her ears are above her nose. So that indicates to me that me as the artist or the viewer is just slightly above her. But otherwise she's pretty much straight on. So a good example for us to use for children's proportions. Now we could start this the same way by drawing a line again at the top of the head and another line for the bottom of the chin. And then if we draw a line about halfway, we'll notice that the main features of the face, all of the good stuff in here, drop below the line as opposed to the eyes being on the line. The reason for that is that the child's cranium is much larger in proportion to their facial features and that's very characteristic of, of young children and babies. So that's something we look for right away to, to show the age or youth of a child. Now according to Andrew Loomis's standard, a child or a baby is going to still be about five eyes widths uh, across in width, but keep in mind that usually the eyes are just a little bit wider apart than um, an eyes width. It could be more or less a little bit, you know, it's going to vary with each individual. But again, five eyes across, so we still have a fairly wide head. And you'll also notice that the corners of the eyes tend to line up with the side of the nose. You'll find that with adults as well. Another thing that you'll find with adults, but maybe not with children, is that the outside corners of the mouth generally line up with the center of the eye, but on her, as you can see, her mouth is still quite a bit smaller than that. So instead, her mouth lines up with more like the side of the iris here. Maybe not even quite that much of a line of her note. Her mouth is so small and delicate and that is a good indicator for her age as well. I think she was about 16 months old in this painting. I'm also going to point out with this painting in particular, um, at this age the shoulders are very narrow and sloping. So we look for this, this roundish shape as the shoulders go across and around and the neck is quite short, almost indistinguishable. So the, the torso is going to be narrow and small, the hands are going to be small, the neck is going to be quite short and underdeveloped, um, but the main thing that we want to look for is the size of the cranium and how all of the features of the face fit in the bottom half of the length of the head. Additionally, keep in mind that with babies and young children especially, the jawline is going to be quite small and underdeveloped. As a child matures and grows older, that jawline will eventually become more angular, but um, be looking for that with babies especially. And I can pull up another example for you of a young baby. Here's a good example of a, a baby where you can see how large the eyes are. This is another point that I want to make. Babies are born with the same eyes that they're going to have for the rest of their lives. So while everything else is much smaller and underdeveloped, the facial bones and, and features, um, all of the, the bones and muscles, they're, they're way underdeveloped because obviously <laughs> there's, they're babies, right? But the eyes um, don't change quite as drastically as other parts of the body. So when a baby's born, their, their eyes are actually about a third of their final size, but they grow extremely fast. And by six months old, a baby's eyeballs are about two thirds of their adult size. So that would explain why babies' eyes look so big compared to the rest of their features. So if I were to go in and actually manipulate this picture to make her eyes look smaller, it would make a drastic difference. Just watch this. Oh, <laughs> a little bit too much. I just creep up to it. Look at what a difference that makes. She looks so much older and quite strange because we're just used to seeing babies with large eyes. And so that's something we should be looking for when we're drawing them and painting them. I'm going to pull up a couple of images of 
profiles so that you can see what I'm talking about as far as the jawline. Again, this is another little painting I did of my daughter when she was maybe about two years old. And the jaw is round and sort of nondescript. You're not going to see harsh, strong, angular features on young children. So we want to look for roundness, full cheeks, small jaws, but still round. And the other thing that we look for on young children are features that sort of have an upturn to them. So you'll see parallels in shapes and angles. What I mean is if you were to draw a line along this nose here, you'd see how it's kind of got this cute little upturn, but then the brow kind of echoes that and her soft little mouth echoes that shape and then the chin echoes that shape. So there's all of these parallel angles going on in the profile of a young child. Over here we've got a little spontaneous portrait I did of my son as a baby while he was sitting in my lap. I was looking in the mirror to do this portrait. Again, very round, soft jawline, but even on a little boy, you know, he's got a little bit more angular of a nose than his sister does. But we still see that little bit of an upturn in the lip, the nose, and the jaw, and of course the eyebrows. So be looking for convex shapes in the forms of children, convex and round. Pulling up an example of a little girl who is slightly older. She was about five years old in this painting, commission painting I did. Look at her jawline. There is a little bit more angularity to it. She's got a slightly more pointy chin, but still round. It still leads to a fullness in the cheeks and a roundness at the side of the face. And her eyes, even though slightly more squinty, are still quite large compared to something you would see in an adult portrait. Her nose is delicate and soft, and something that we keep in mind with paintings of children, of course, is that uh, the, the softer the lighting on them, the more flattering it tends to be. And again, take note of the narrowness of the shoulders and just how sloping they are. Okay, I've pulled up a few more images here as we move from the proportions of the face to the proportions of the body. These are changing always as children grow and mature. So something to keep in mind is that um, if you're going with the classical standard, kind of the standard that Andrew Loomis talks about in his books and so forth, if you look at an infant, they usually are about four heads high. Um, this is a picture, just a photograph, of my son at about 18 months, and he was a toddler, so he's not going to be quite the foreheads high, but he does end up being, let's check it out, one, two, three, four, he's about four and a half or four and a third heads high. Um, as they get older, it's gonna, they're going to stretch out a little bit. Their heads are going to appear a little bit smaller in relationship to their bodies. So at about five years old, you'll see them being about six heads high, maybe about seven heads high for a 10-year-old. And eventually, you get to adulthood, it's usually about seven and a half to eight heads high. Of course, don't take these as a rule. They're, this is a very highly classicized idea. But it's something to look for and keep in mind as you're drawing and painting the younger model. Now I'm um, talking about hands and feet. I'm going to have a, another separate video on this topic, but I'm going to go back to just what I mentioned earlier about the face. And the fact is with hands and arms and limbs, you're going to be looking for roundness. So look at these chubby wrists and chubby arms. Um, make your brush strokes and your marks so that they indicate the roundness and the fullness of the form. You can see that some of my brush strokes sort of follow that direction. And be looking for subtle shadows here at the wrist because that's where you see those wrist dimples. There's going to be little dimples in the hands. Adults have knuckles and babies just have these little, these little dimples that kind of show up. And so you can look for those. On the legs, there's also this chubbiness, this roundness. I think he's only about four months old in this painting. And um, it's a little hard to see, 
but there's usually a fold somewhere in the back of the thigh and it disappears over time but on babies it's very evident so look for that also that the roundness and the chubbiness at the ankles you'll see um, a fullness at the top of the feet and the top of the hands so instead of the, the kind of flat, squarish effect that you see on adult hands and wrists, everything with babies and toddlers especially is round. Another example here, if I zoom in, this was a little painting of my daughter when she was about nine months old and crawling around the house everywhere. Her hands, again, show those creases at the arms and the wrists. You can see that thigh dimple right there and fullness at the ankle, really fat little chubby knees. You can see that, that round but underdeveloped jawline and little tapering fingers. So with babies and small children, look for the fingers to just really taper off in these, these little V shapes. So I think that gives you a pretty good idea of where to start with proportions and some of the basics, but um, I have a great little exercise adapted from Andrew Loomis that I can show you next on how to really get those proportions ingrained in your brain. And we'll do a, an exercise on drawing a baby. Okay, so start by drawing a square and dividing it in half lengthwise and widthwise. Then in the bottom half, add four lines of equal distance horizontally. You're gonna have a little bit of extra space on either side of the center horizontal line, but have five segments for the width of the eyes. Then you can place the features. The eyebrows will make up two of those segments at the top, and then you can put the eyes in after that. From there, the nose will be about the same width as the distance between the eyes, as will the width of the mouth. And you can see where they land on the lines. The nose is in the middle, of that bottom half of the big square and the mouth is just below that. From there you can add the rest of the head making the ears fall just below the bottom of the nose and fill in the details as you go. You can add shading whatever you'd like to do but you'll notice instantly how the proportions look like that of a baby. Honestly, I think the hardest comparison to make is between a teenager and an adult. Teens tend to have characteristics of both children and adults, so if you're used to only painting one or the other, it's really easy to mess it up and make, it, make them look too grown up or too childlike. So I think the biggest difference is actually in their attitude or their carriage, which is obviously harder to portray than just a technical proportional difference. Um, there's this dichotomy between great insecurity and great openness to the world. There's this forward thinking and excitement about life and teenagers tend to exhibit both fear and fearlessness. So in my experience, the best way to observe a teenager is to do color studies of them in person, talk to them, get to know them. I found this with children as well. and. Just know that there are going to be some proportional differences. They'll have still some baby fat on their faces, but for the most part, their bodies are becoming longer and more stretched out and more adult-like.